I'm Rhonda Fitterer. And I'm Lover and Dee. Welcome to Cooking Crave. And today we got a family favorite. We got some cinnamon polo parts, which are awesome. I know that we traditionally you know, make them for breakfast, but they right. actually are dessert that you can make anytime. Absolutely. And you found a recipe in a magazine, a ham quiche. And it's yes. a breakfast ham quiche. So it is. So and I and we I think use it's hash great. browns for the crust. It's gonna be, I think it's gonna be really good. It will. All right, so Something different. we're gonna let our viewers know what re re ingredients they need for okay. this recipe. So you can go ahead and cook along with us. If you have a DVR, go ahead and pause if you need to. For the hash brown quiche, it's actually hash brown ham quiche, but that's kind of a tongue twister, so don't get confused. You're gonna need three cups of frozen hash browns, a fourth cup of butter. You're gonna need a cup of shredded pepper jack cheese. Ooh, gonna be a little spicy too. Yeah. Cup of shredded Swiss cheese. You're gonna need a cup of cooked ham, two eggs, half a cup of heavy whipping cream, queen, cream, <laughs> and some salt. So that's not so it's like it's pretty easy, yeah, other than you know very, it's yeah, it's pretty simple. It's not queen, it's cream. That's so right. just remember that. <laughs> okay. And oh. then the ingredients for the pull aparts, you're gonna need some tubes of biscuits. You're gonna need no. some vanilla ice cream, some brown sugar, white sugar, and butter, right? Yes. See, I remembered all those ingredients without even having a piece of paper. Oh, right. Because I've made this myself. Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. how, what's, what are okay. we going to do to get started today? Okay. Uh, start with, uh, you know, a 9 to 10 inch pie plate. Okay. And we're going to start with hash browns. Uh, you want them thawed. And uh, I put them on um, so a paper towel to soak up any moisture. Okay. So we want it to, you know, uh, not you know, soggy hash browns. We want them nice and dry. Okay. Um, we use a fourth cup butter and what I, you want to divide that, take two tables uh, or two teaspoons of butter and uh, just uh, butter your pie plate here like That's this. That's heavily buttered. Pie it plate. is heavily buttered because, you know, we're going to, uh, I started to put the oven on at 425 degrees. Okay. We're going to put the crust in there and the butter and drizzle a little butter on there. And then we're going to bake that for like 20, 25 minutes before we add the ham and uh, cheese and, uh, oh, and cream okay. and all that. So, all right. So we're gonna get started with that. First here, I'm gonna just take that and I'm gonna dump that in here. Okay, so we're gonna push that up on the sides, you know, try to make it as tight as we can. Or I mean, firm. almost like we are making a pie. Yes, Almost like is. you were working with dough, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I see you're using, um, this is more like the cubed hash browns. Do you think it would matter if you're using the shredded or? Well, you know, preferably the shredded I think would be better. Okay. But when I went to my freezer, this is what I had. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's going to work the same. And you know, it's when you're- It's gonna taste the same probably it, too. It, it will. You know, so we're just going to press, like I said, press that down, make it firm. And then with the, you know, heavily buttered underneath, it's going to help brown that from the bottom up, you know? And Absolutely. Yep. There. So we want a nice big, I mean, a nice deep well for put a, the ham and cheese and the cream and the eggs. All that good stuff. Okay. okay. So that went really very simple. And now I did melt the rest of the butter. Okay. So we're going to just drizzle that uh, over the rest of the, I mean the hash browns before we bake that. And you said again, we're gonna bake this for how long? Uh, it says 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so probably just until we get that little bit of a golden brown. Right, until it's golden brown, that's correct. You know, that's all we want. Okay, there we go. Okay. So I already got the oven on, so we're gonna pop that in. Go and we're gonna set the timer for, well, like I said, we're gonna start with 20 minutes. Okay. Because it's not gonna take very long to mix up the rest of the ingredients, we wanna get the, the cinnamon pull parts in the oven too. Okay. Uh, because it's at 425 and that's just the perfect temperature for baking the pull parts. Okay. So 
uh, take a 9 by 13 pan. We have already, um, I sprayed that lightly with Pam. Okay. And I've got some biscuits. Now, when I went to the store the other day, I usually take the four of the smaller tubes yep. and they were all out of it. So I took three tubes of the little 10 ounce versus the eight ounce. Okay. So, uh, so you improvised a little bit. Improvised a little bit and it's going to work. And this is just a, a regular biscuit that you need for this recipe. You don't have to buy anything in particular. Right. Any biscuit, anything that's, you know, on sale, whatever works, you know. <laughs> and that it, somehow it, it tastes really good whether we have um, the expensive dough or just, you know, like I said, the store brand. So what we're going to do is we're going to take them out and we're going to quarter them. And while I quarter them, uh, we're going to drop them in a bowl of cinnamon and sugar. And I took about a cup and a half of sugar and a good hefty teaspoon of uh, uh, cinnamon. So I'll let you just go ahead and stir that up in there and okay. coat that. And with coating it with the cinnamon uh, sugar there, it helps, you know, it doesn't stick together. It pulls apart very nicely. So, like I said, we just do that and you just go ahead and put that in there. I guess I learned from you, I don't like using utensils. I want to put my <laughs> fingers. Right, you just put it in there and mix it all together. And actually what I should do to save an extra step here is, well, this the heat's up, we're going to, um, Take um, I, I take a good generous half cup of ice cream. Maybe it's almost more gets to a half a to a, a cup of ice cream. I like that really well. Um, and then a half a cup of sugar. Okay. There. And a half a cup of brown sugar. And um, half a cup of uh, butter, which is your um, stick. So just okay. go ahead and put that in there. And then we're going to just put that in the microwave and heat that up just to, to melt that and mix it together. You don't want to heat it, you know, too long that it gets to start to caramelize and gets too firm because we don't want that. Because when it bakes with the biscuits, it's just going to, you know, you don't want to have it too thick or caramelized. We want it just more creamy. Okay. So we're going to pop that in the oven and I'm going to just put that on for two minutes. Okay. And we will continue with this and where did I, oh, here's my knife. You hid my knife under the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ploy, I guess. Okay. I want to be careful. I don't want to touch you with this knife. This is sharp. And in fact, these biscuits here, it was just the buttermilk biscuits with, uh, they said butter, butter flavoring, and I can actually see uh, just tidbits of a little butter in there, so that should really make it good. Extra rich. Yes. And this is such an easy thing to do, and, and I know with this caramel rest, I mean, just making your own caramel to pour over these, you've used this recipe instead of making different caramels for just regular caramel rolls and anything that Ab you make with right i love bread you now using this when i make regular caramel rolls you're right you know it it's just nice and creamy and just just a good caramel recipe and you can use i think you were using like a new york style ice cream but you can pretty much use any vanilla ice cream right any vanilla ice cream i just happen to have the New York style in hand. That's a little bit more yellow and that, but I don't necessarily know that I, there's that much difference between the two. You know, it's whatever on sale. So this is something that I, you know, I was, we've made at home and my kids like rolling the, the dough, so it's something that's very easy to, to involve the kids in with that, making. Right, they feel like they're being a, really helpful and, and they're having fun. And that's what it's all about. Well, you they're going to get their fingers dirty yeah. too. Yeah. Well, yes. 
And the thing is, you want to start them out young, you know, cooking with you and learning to cook so that they enjoy cooking when they get older, when we really want them to do it and stuff. So let's go ahead and check our uh, caramel over here. And we're going to just mix that up a little bit, get that brown sugar melted in here. And I think I'm going to just put that back in for probably um, 30 more seconds. The butter isn't totally melted, so we'll just do that. So it, just enough, like I said, so it's, it's nice and hot, but not caramelized. Okay, and see, that went so quickly. It's nice, you know, using your hands and stuff that you just... I'm probably going to have to use a little bit of water because I got some underneath my fingernails. Oh, the cinnamon <laughs> sugar. Yes, you probably will. <laughs> and that, so we'll just you know, wait a few seconds. We'll let you go to the sink. Sounds great. <laughs> okay, the timer went off for our hash brown crust. So let's just check that out and see if that's kind of browning on it for us. Okay. Oh, it is. Look at those edges. Those are nice, getting nice and brown. So what I'm going to, well, do, we're going to turn the oven down to 350. Although the pull aparts, they say, you know, 400, 350 is going to be fine. We probably might bake them just another five, extra five minutes. Okay. But that's going to be just fine. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to do that. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to bring that over here. And, and that's just sizzling. It is. It smells good, doesn't it? It does. You know, it might be the pull-aparts, too. I'm not sure. It's, it's... They both are probably <laughs> pretty good. So we're going to add this filling here. And that just makes a really nice amount there, too. It, it's not, you know, skimping on it, but, you know, you're going to fill that pie plate up. So when that um, cheese and egg that all bakes and melts oh that's going to be and again we use great. pepper jack cheese and was it a swiss cheese a swiss cheese so mm -hmm. it's going to have a little bit more of a sharper taste and and depending on who you're making it for if you have younger kids i, I might opt for like a, a little bit of a cheddar blend you can certainly or do a monterey that. jack blend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know now we didn't we added a little bit of a salt but we didn't add a you know, any pepper or anything like that. So you have the spices from the cheese and stuff. So that, no, no. I mean, that kind of, yeah. Balances think, out, but it you does. know, yeah. But okay. those are two sharper cheese Cheeses, tastes. They are. Bundled so together, gonna, but it's going to be fabulous. Put that back in the oven there. And our pull-aparts are browning very nicely. They are. So we're going to set the timer. We had 12 minutes for the uh, pull aparts now are ready. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just set it for another about 15 minutes and okay. check them. And then we'll just have about another 10 minutes for the quiche after that. Okay. So, so let's set that timer so we don't forget. Oh, I guess I put it on seconds instead of minutes. That's not going to work. All right. So, so we want 15 minutes there. So great. Okay, so we will be back shortly again. All right. Okay, well, the buzzer is going off, and I think that's going to be for the pull aparts. Well, I smell them, and oh, I think the that... people down the street smell them. Oh. <sighs> well, we, we're going to lock the doors. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. All right. Oh, yes, those are definitely done. So, yep, so I'm going to put that uh, timer back on for another... 12 minutes I'm going to go. Okay. And before, then we'll check the quiche okay. and stuff. And you know, when I have these, I like to flip them out of the pan right away when it's hot so that the caramel just comes oozes right off. out of that. Look at that. See, it's just bubbling hot. Yeah. And, and you know, if you wait and the caramel kind of sets up, then it, it's a little bit harder to get that all out of the pan. Okay. And that. So we're going to scrape that. And you truly oh. do want to use a pretty deep 9 by 13 inch pan because, I mean, I, before we flipped it, you saw how fluffed they, up it did get. Right, because those biscuits, I mean, they're uh, the biscuits that you're using, and when you bake them, you know that they double in size and stuff, so. I mean, I get a cute 
accused of scraping everything out, but this is something you don't want to miss. No. Uh, a lick of leaving in the pan. So. No, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Okay. We might, you know, need to take a little bit yeah. easy on no, normal soup cans and yeah. stuff. But this, I agree this with you on that. Okay. So we're going to just leave that set a little bit. And uh, when the quiche is done, we'll be able to feature them both together. Okay, well, the timer is going off for our quiche, so, and we'll just turn that oven off, and let's check that out. I can just smell that. Cheese already. Oh. Oh. It is. That Look really browned nice. really nicely. Very good. So let's just bring that on over here. And just give that a second or two, but we can go ahead and put some of our great pull-aparts on our uh, plate here. Absolutely. So as you can see how nicely they just pull apart. Um, so, you know, it's almost like finger food. It is. You know, just going to be great there. And I'm going to cut a piece here. And you can see how nice and brown it is. But you know, being just taken out of the oven, it's pretty hot. You know, I really think we're going to just wait to take it out it's okay gonna be there but we're gonna certainly hold think, that up and i think i'm holding the better end of these right Ooh. now even though this one's gonna be fabulous too it will it, it will. will it will and i mean i know this is a family recipe so thanks for bringing this one up because i think for those people that don't know how to make it or you've had it in your recipe box and haven't made it for a while pull it back out because it's oh. fabulous Right, that's why they're called pull aparts. You pull it back out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to get these recipes, just go to Consolidated's website, www.ctctel.com. And thank you always to the workshop for being our sponsor. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening.